All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome into Wade's Ventures YouTube channel. How's everybody doing today? Um, let's see, did I lose our guest? Are you still there, my man? Uh oh, I think I lost him. This is the first on Wade's Ventures YouTube. Um, oh, I think I hit the wrong button. <laughs> okay, this is the first on Wade's Ventures YouTube channel. One second, one second. Let me let us get our guest back here. Let's see. The problem is the same. Same link. Okay, there we go. All right. Anyways, so there we go. welcome in, guys. Welcome in. Let me say hello to some people. What's going on, Redneck? We got to get you on here. Reseller Mom, guys, go check out her YouTube channel. Seriously, um, she's got a YouTube channel and she's got like three three thousand uh, amazing followers already. So go check out her YouTube channel. What's going on, George? Hugo's in the house. Cindy's in the house. Tony's in the house. Colleen's in the house. Guys, welcome in. It seriously the last like two days. I've been doing earlier shows. I feel like I need to drink some coffee or something at, during these times. Um, but guys, you know the drill. What's going on, flipping? You guys know the drill. Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays. Pretty much the whole week, we invite amazing people on this YouTube channel. And uh, today's guest is bar none. Really cool. We actually met in person, gave each other a hug. He exchanged an SD card, which was a magical moment. And uh, a lot of cool stuff happened in Vegas, eBay Open. We're going to talk about that. We got a little haul video. And, uh, of course, I got to ask this amazing reseller some questions. Dig into his life of reselling online. Without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to my amazing buddy over here. Let's go hey. ahead. Man. Hey, how y'all doing? So my name is Brian. Uh, I'm the vegan flipper on all social media. Um, I've been buying and selling for a while, uh, but I do mostly men's clothing on eBay with uh, about 25% hard goods, and then I've I've ventured out into Poshmark recently. So I do a little bit of everything, but I focus mostly, mostly on clothes as my bread and butter. Guys, if he doesn't have the best outfit ever, since ever, since we started interviews. I got my shell, too. <laughs> that is incredible, guys. Incredible. Loving that outfit. That's what Colleen said. Guys, so, so give us a little snapshot about you. We met in eBay Open. I told you we had to have you on the show. Uh, how was your experience with eBay Open? Um, I honestly, I loved eBay Open. Um, I kind of I have mixed takeaways from it, but while I was there, I loved it. Um, I loved being able to network and meet people that I haven't met before or I've only met on internet. Um, that was awesome. So, uh, um. I would say the only thing, my only drawback was I, I felt like some of the um, some of the workshops were a little too beginner. Um, they weren't labeled that way. So if they would have been labeled that way, I would have understood what was going on a little more. But I, I went to stuff not knowing what the, the level should have been. No, for sure. I, I, I did get that um, a lot, you know, that the fact that the workshops were kind of like towards new sellers. I think yeah. – I think next year that's going to change a little bit just because it's, um, you know, I keep hearing the audio is low. Is that better? Oh, uh, let me check. Let me check here. I just dropped my phone guys. Yeah. Talk now. Talk now, my man. All right, cool. Can you all hear me a little bit better now? Is that, is that better without the the hood on? That is a lot better guys. That is a okay. lot better. Awesome. Lot better. Oh my gosh. So, all right, where were we? This 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 is an abnormal start for me, and it's all my fault, guys. I apologize. <laughs> um, all right, so where were we at, guys? Help us in chat. Help us in chat. Uh, first and foremost, um, the I think next year eBay Open 2019. Hopefully, they gear some of this towards newer sell or sorry, ex uh, existing you know veteran sellers or people yeah. that's a little bit because I have. Um, Okay, I stumbled upon the first one I went into was social media. Out of all of them, um, guys, you okay. take you take kids to Vegas. It's uh, you know, it's interesting. You don't get to go to everything. Okay, you're changing diapers. But uh, yeah, so I I went to the first one. Didn't even know what it was. Stepped in and was social media, very basic. But I thought it was really cool because I sat next to this lady, 
And um, it was the weirdest experience, dude. So I sat next to this lady. She was sitting to my left. And, um, and then there was another guy to my right. And this was very beginner, right? Really beginner stuff. And she had a notepad like this. And she was probably in her, I would say, 40s. Really cool lady. She, she was writing down everything on this notepad. And, um, and she was, she was just writing down everything. And, and, and I knew that at that point, people that were in that class, they wanted to start social media and what better place for me to be than to be in a class like that. Right. Cause I love helping people. So, um, I think it was a little awkward cause I was like, Hey, are you, are you trying to start social media? And, uh, she goes, yeah, yeah. So I handed her my business card. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I, yeah, I was looking for one to show you guys, but anyways, I handed her my business card. And uh, it was such a cool experience for me because right after we got done with that, I still need to post something with her, I think. Um, but I added her on to my Instagram. And she added me. And um, and then she said that she gained some followers on Instagram after that. So it was just a really like weird, cool experience for me. But yeah, to your point, like they were definitely geared towards newer sellers. So and which which is cool. Like I like that idea, but I, there was no marketing as to which classes you should go to and which classes you shouldn't go to. It was just kind of a free for all. Oh yeah, and so. the tough part about that is uh, if you are going into a class that you probably shouldn't, like you're wasting your time going into that when you could be in something different. So right, right. It's, which uh, by the way, I, I will have to say I do love your business card. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had it on me too. But oh, oh, oh I, was, I was gonna say. Do you, uh, let's see. I don't. I don't. Guys, the reason I show that business card constantly is like it looks amazing, but I actually didn't do anything. You just call it Vista Print, and um, they will um, design it for you based on your specs. And don't let them charge you a penny because every time I call, they do it free, and I've had it twice now. So, um, all right. So let's let's say since the 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 uh, the show got a little bunk there when I dropped my phone. Let me say, oh, I already <laughs> actually did say the letter. Guys, I need to stick with the six p.m. shows. I'm telling you. <laughs> Man, kill me, Stitch Witch. What's what's going on? Welcome in. All right, so let's get into this. Tell me about you. First of all, let's talk about your name, right? Because yeah. I think that stands out. Like, how's the vegan life doing for you? Man, I love it. Um, I started it a few years ago um, because I was way overweight and I wanted something healthier, um, and did a lot of research and. The vegan lifestyle is the number one way to decrease cancer risk. And I've had cancer in my family for probably four generations now. So I want to get on that as early as I can. But then now, as soon as I started doing that research, I also started doing the envir environmental research and the cruelty research. And so, I mean, once once you get hooked into it and, and, and learn all the facts, um, it's hard to not. It's hard to go back. Um, but yeah, I, I, I did the name because I wanted, obviously, I wanted to start a YouTube that I was going to do a little bit of both, um, partially vegan stuff, partially reselling stuff. Um, and so I wanted a little bit of both on there. And uh, um, I've got a few vi vegan videos, but mostly it's reselling um, because that's the stuff that there's not, there's, there's a lot of content, but there's not as much content out of the two lifestyles. For sure. No, I, um, I hate to say it, man, but I ate like three burgers before I went on live. With you. <laughs> it's, um, but I a hundred percent wholeheartedly agree with you that like health is really important. By the way, you are looking extremely healthy. Anybody tell you that? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so it's, it's been, a, you know, I, I, it's funny. Like I was eating so unhealthy at my corporate job. Um, and then I start working reselling. I'm eating a lot healthier, but not as healthy as I decided to when I left the corporate job. Because I was like, hey, I'm going to have all this time. I'm going to be able to make like really healthy lasagnas and roast beef with like, you know, very healthy. But yeah, uh, I need to get back on that because I realize now that, you know, as you get a little bit older, you know, you, things start popping up a little bit. Like I was getting this uh -huh. left side and I'm like, what is going on? So yeah, I, I definitely need to get a little more healthier. I may have to creep on your guys' uh, on your YouTube and by the way, guys, um, as always, you guys know, if you don't and you're here for the first time since we are early, um, the YouTube link is in the description there in the um, in the chat. So if you guys want to go over there, subscribe to him. He's got already got amazing reselling content. And this guy <laughs> does a lot different stuff than I do. Trust me, you're going to – he knows <laughs> a 
than I do too. Let's put that out there quick. Uh, I don't know about all of that. So guys, go subscribe to him and let him let me know what number you are so I can give you a massive shout out. And I promise I will not leave any of you guys out. So, um, all right. And we're going to be putting that periodically in. Real quick, before we get started, you've got a hat over there and you've got something on the hat. Can you grab that? Like, what is that thing? Are we talking this one here? Yeah. 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 So this is my birthday hat. So it says happy birthday, and then it's got the candles that are on it. Um, and it's got a little Velcro, so you can change sizes if you want to put it on your kid or whatever. Um, but it works It works well for uh, about 80% of the year, because once you get to know anybody, somebody's birthday is coming up all the time. That is amazing. So, that is amazing. I yeah. had to ask. I was like, what is that thing back there? <laughs> um, I, also have, I also have my reindeer hat, too. And what What's that on the cap? Is that plastic on the cap? What is that? On the hat birthday one? It looks the Cubs. Oh, the Cubs. Yeah, it's a, uh, sorry, it's one of the uh, hat shapers. So you uh, you just open it up and put it in between the two, and you can actually throw this right in your dishwasher, the top shelf, or in a washing machine. And so when it washes your hats, it keeps that shape. Um I found one at a garage sale. I've got a couple of them. I found one at a garage sale for like a buck, but you can buy them at like lids or like hat stores for like 15 bucks or something. Um, they're super convenient. Even if you just want to put it in there and spray it down with some water and it reshapes the form of the hat, if it got bent or something. So super oh convenient. God. This one's got a little crease down the middle that I'm trying to f get out. Guys like dropping knowledge over here and it's not <laughs> dropping the knowledge. Um, that is amazing. That's the first on our show, by the way. And I know a lot of people watching this is going to be like, Oh my gosh, I need to get one of those picking up hats. Like cleaning. Yeah. Them. that makes it easy. Uh, I didn't know you can put hats in dishwashers. Like, yeah. So you, I wouldn't ever recommend it if, uh, you don't have the form cause it'll just shred the hat basically. Um, but if you have the form to go in there, as long as you do top shelf and you don't do like a scented or whatever soap, then you're good. Okay, that that's amazing, guys. In chat, let me know if you knew about that. Seriously, one if you did, two if you didn't. I'm curious. So what? Um, by the way, you guys noticed this amazing outfit. I actually sold that exact one. <laughs> I don't remember how long ago? But I believe it was like 55 bucks. It's on my Instagram if you check. Um, so that is uh, that's it's pretty amazing. I can't believe I sold that thing. I got it at the bins. So a lot of ones. A lot of people knew that. Holy cow. By the way, reseller mom, how are you doing? Let me know in chat. I know you had that that uh, cast on, right? Did you get that thing off? Let me know. Um, she did that in the line of duty, I believe, Amazon. So, all right. She, so, uh, she did a show this morning, and I don't think she had it on. So I think really? she's uh, oh. on her way to recovery. Nice, nice. Hey, it's always a better story when you do it while you're reselling. You know? <laughs> Um, all right, so we got a lot of people subscribing. Let's do this real quick, and then we'll get into it. Hit Flip It Mama 139. We got uh, Mr. Quest 139. Oh, uh oh, must be, must be a delay again. Rosie 142. Guys, Gina 143. Guys, I'll put his uh, YouTube in the description. You just saw the hat trick. I didn't even know that that you can dishwash, you know, hats like that with the form, of course. So you guys need to go subscribe. It's amazing. So. Let me get into this. You said about the family. Like, let's talk a little bit personal. Then we'll talk nuggets, and then we'll go over the haul video. So, tell me a little bit. Do you have brothers, sisters, mom, dad? Uh, yeah. So my sister um, lives a couple hours away. Um, she's married and has she just had her second kid. Um, so I try to visit them as often as possible for the kiddos. Um, my dad still lives back home, kind of out in the country land, out in the middle of nowhere. And then my mom, um, I actually haven't talked to in a while. Um, she kind of cut off ties about high school time. So uh, I don't really talk to her much, but everybody else in the family, I uh, I pretty, try to keep in contact with as much as possible. But I'm the outlier because I moved away to go to school. And when I did, I stayed there. So nice. I'm just kind of out there by myself. No, that that's the way to go. And I was just going to ask you, like, one of my questions is, like, what does the reselling community mean to you? And um, that's a question I asked towards the end, but I'll ask it now. Like, even if uh, I had 
no friends or family. Like I feel like I know so many really cool people all across the United States that I can honestly ask them questions and reach out to at any time. Right. Oh yeah. It's huge. And I mean, even like an event like eBay open, it would have terrified me last year because I, I don't have like complete social anxiety, but like new settings and new places I've never been gives me anxiety pretty badly. But knowing how many people that I knew were going to be there that I get to meet, like I, I was completely at ease the whole week. Um, and I was never really alone unless I wanted to be alone the whole week. So and how do you, like, I know a lot of people have that. Um, there's um, Beth, I don't know if she's in here, but she openly said that she has anxiety too. And uh, so how do you deal with your anxiety when it comes to reselling? And then in general, like, is there, I mean, you just basically, have, is there any ways to cope with it? Uh, well, I worked the last 14 years in restaurants. Um, so kind of being forced to talk to people every five minutes you meet somebody new in a restaurant. Um, so that definitely has at least taught me how to like fight through that feeling, you know? Um, but honestly there, there's still times like if, if there's an event going on that I haven't been to before, I'll just kind of skip it and do my own thing. But, um, I mean the key for me now that I'm starting to get a little bit older, uh, is, I mean, just kind of consciously making that decision to, to do something or to go out and fight that feeling head on. Um, because it's, I mean, at this point, none of those feelings have ever turned out to harm me physically. So why limit yourself? It, it's, so. I, I saw this amazing quote and every time I want to like say a really cool quote that I've seen, I can't actually remember it. <laughs> I don't know if that it happens constantly. It gets me. But oh yeah. It was, um, Oh man, I don't know. It was so amazing. I can't remember. It was, you know, I, every, every, I'm a degenerate on Instagram. Like literally I'm, <laughs> I'm way too long and I, I'll scroll through there and I'm the kind of guy that will scroll through the whole feed and uh, waste like hours and hours doing it. Um, but that's where I find really cool people too. So it's not a waste at all. Uh -huh. but I do find these cool quotes and it's incredible. Incredible. Paul, Wade, you inspire me. I have a disability after a car accident and used your channel along with several others to try and um uh try and motivate uh, let's see oh motivated to get back to reselling oh my gosh yes um paul my man um i would be lying to say that i i you know i never used to have um any issues myself but i have had a few times i wouldn't say i don't know if they're panic attacks or just like anxiety in general quite a bit actually believe it or not and um you know, it's um, it's a tough thing to go through. It's tough to dig yourself out of a hole, um, especially like trying to stay positive and do that. And I think that one reason why I created this channel, hopefully it resonates with everybody, is you'll hear me say it time and time again, but I believe social media makes you more of a like social person which in turn makes you smile, happy, like in general, you get to meet people and be friends with people. And so we'll talk a little bit later in the show, but this amazing guy here, I met with him the first time in person and um, my SD card was full um, from taking footage and I should have that video out to you soon. And um, I, I didn't know what the heck to do. I'm in Vegas and I'm out of an SD card. So that means I can't film anymore and we're halfway through the events and I want to bring it home to you guys. And then here he is with an SD card. He gives it to me free, although I did ask to pay for it, but he was like, no, 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 no. You take it free, which I think is amazing. And he gave me the SD card. Like my point being is, is um, this reselling community gives you people that you can reach out to constantly, coworkers, more importantly, friends, family, like, and um, that's the reason I have people on here to ask them about their personal life. So that way you know about them personally and their reselling, you guys can follow them, follow their journey. And then they can follow you and reach out to you. So uh, building bridges is where it comes into play here, Paul. And I just, I, if you ever need anything, please reach out to me. Uh, I am a little bit slow on messages, but I will definitely help you out as best I can. So I'm, I'm glad that this channel helps you too. Anyways, so tell me a little bit about the, the, the if you have any, how, how does it work if somebody, because are you full-time, part-time? Give us that idea here. Yeah, so uh, December, like November, December, I went full-time reselling. Um, I am in a weird predicament though, where I went to a private school 
and got my degree from private school. So my student loans are astronomical um, because of that. And I was in this weird spot for the last couple of months where they raised my student loan payments. And I was, I was at that point with reselling where it was either put the money back into the business or pay my loan. Um, so I'm starting to work part-time again. I do dog walk and um, little stuff like that. But my goal is to, to keep reselling full-time and make other stuff part-time. Um, and especially with fourth quarter coming up, I know it's going to start taking off. Um, so, but if I can do both for a while just to pay down some debt, I full-time is definitely my main goal. And I've been doing full-time for this whole entire year. So yeah. most, mostly eBay, a little bit of Poshmark. I tried Amazon for a minute, but I don't really like the way that's set up for me personally. Yeah, they're – so first and foremost, like I commend you for doing that because it, it, it is tough like reselling, trying to put the money back into your business, but then also having a lot of bills. And right. uh, private school is like, I've got a lot of friends who went to private school and it is not cheap. <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> Holy cow. So one thing that Christina Thrifts told me, guys, if you're not following her, she's cool. I think she's, um, she's like uh, traveling somewhere. But she told me that one thing that she does is she has eBay, her primarily primary primary business is selling on Instagram, believe it or not, but she has eBay, Instagram, and Poshmark. And what she likes to do is I believe it's Poshmark. She only uses Poshmark to put that money towards debt, which that resonated with me. So it's like, Hey, if you're only on one platform or maybe two platforms, join a third platform and use that third platform purely to pay off your debt. And uh, you can cross post all you want, but use that to pay off your debt. Like, so I thought that was really, Guys. Or use that for like a savings account. Yeah. Or, yeah. Something that you're not depending on all the time. Yeah. And I think it makes it easier for you to join another platform because you're like, ah, if it works out, it works out. But if it doesn't, it doesn't. But if I sell yeah. something on there, I will put it to savings, you know? That's, that's how I started with Poshmark. I started putting stuff there and I was like, well, if I don't sell anything, I'm not losing anything. And if I do start selling it, I can just keep that building up. I actually used a lot of that money for eBay Open. Yes. Oh. I, it, and you like the networking was amazing at eBay open. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. I've met everybody and in, including people that aren't on social media yep. talking to all kinds of people, which is really actually common. Uh, it's common for a lot of people there that, that are not on social media. Pam, what's going on? Nice meeting you as well. So tell me a little bit about like how you found out about reselling. Like, do you remember the moment that you're like, Holy <laughs> crap, I can sell something online. So I can remember as far back as freshman year of high school, buying big bags of the sour candied warheads. And then I would turn around and flip those individually to people in the class. Um, I did that my freshman year. I remember doing it in math class specifically. Um, but that wasn't like my, all right, this is how I'm getting into reselling. That was just, I can remember always like trying to find ways to do stuff. That was the earliest I can remember it. Um, but basically about a year and a half ago, I mean, I, I was, I was, okay. So we have a lot in common as far as buying storage units and auctions and stuff like that. I was buying storage units and stuff that I couldn't figure out how to get rid of locally. I was just throwing on eBay one at a time here and there. I maybe had 50 items in my store, probably less than that. Um, and then I started dating a girl who was watching a bunch of resellers on YouTube. And I was like, wait, I'm already on eBay. Maybe I can just start buying specifically to put stuff on eBay instead of just lucking into it. Um, so that was about probably a year and a half ago. I started actually looking for stuff to put on, e on eBay and started growing that to, I think I had about four or 500 items on eBay while I was still working a full-time job. Um, and I could see how easy it was to grow myself if I put the time in. So that's when I decided at the end of last year to, uh, start focusing on this only just to try and grow it. Uh, it, the famous words, it always starts with a girl. <laughs> well, the, the funny part is I got to, or we got to about 400 items and then we broke up. And as soon as we broke up, I went to like 1500 items. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, now I'm going to do it on my own just to prove that I can do it myself. Oh, oh. my gosh. Hey, <laughs> it's So tell us again, how many platforms are you on right now? Uh, so three-ish. So I'm on eBay mostly, a little bit of Poshmark, and then I sell, sell stuff locally. 
So anything big, heavy, or electronics, stuff like that, I sell on Facebook or offer up or whatever. I kind of kind of count all those local sales as one platform because oh, yeah. they're all the same. Oh yeah. And so. what? So we kind of missed this, but give a, give me a lands, uh, landscape of where you're at. Like what state do you live in? Oh, kind of, you like thrifting. Yeah. So I'm in Ohio. I'm in Columbus, Ohio. So I'm right in the middle, very busy city. Um, and actually where I'm located is in between like kind of the crossroads of four cities or suburbs, I guess. And there's a very high end suburb. There's a very low end. And then there's a couple in the, in the middle. And so I go a little bit of everywhere just because they all have different types of stuff. Um, but we also have the limited is in town. Um, so Victoria's secret stuff is all over the place. Um, there's a couple other bigger companies that are located here in town. So it's easy to find stuff along those. But on the other hand, like I don't find the Nikes and Pendleton and stuff like you guys find a lot up in the Pacific Northwest. I just don't see as much of it. But uh, so I, I try summertime um, garage sales, yard sales, estate sales. Those are my, my forte. Um, and then in the wintertime, I start leaning back more on Goodwill, Goodwills and other thrift stores. Um, we finally got a Goodwill bins within a half hour, so I shop there a lot. Uh, my favorite still is probably storage units. Um, I don't get a lot of them because I don't have the space to just bring stuff in like that. But that's my favorite because it's per dollar, you're getting so much for your money, um, even if you have to throw half of it away, typically. It so. The thing I love about storage units is like, it's all about contacts too. Like for example, if I buy a 10 by 10 storage unit and there's a lot of big bulky stuff on there, if you have a contact to somebody that actually owns a brick and mortar location, you can sell it to them and they can sell it up at their place, you know, and get rid uh -huh. of that. Stuff. Um, yeah. You're going to get a lot of, you're, but you're going to get a lot of trash too. And oh so, yeah. Every time. Yep. Um, so guys, you, how many guys do we have in chat, guys? Type one if you are a gentleman in chat. I've got a little non-reselling tip for you guys that he uh, that he had brought to my attention. But um, guys, if you guys are in here, we are not the uh, – girls are not the only ones with this card, okay? Yes. <laughs> credit card here, guys. Cre Victoria's Secret credit card. Your man Wade has a Victoria's Secret credit card, guys, so – you uh, you know what you need to do to uh, you know, to get those yeah. gifts for your ladies. Now, is that card for your wife or for reselling? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my oh. oh, man! I like that. It's actually for reselling, guys. Don't get that. okay. <laughs> um. So yeah. Anyways, uh, are you were you a gamer at one point? Because isn't those a gamer? Yeah, like? these are PlayStation headphones. Uh, I was never a serious gamer. Just always screwed around. Um. But we did like Call of Duty and stuff, so I got the the headphones for that. So I, I uh, Pam, to answer your question, my husband's too afraid to go in. Boy, <laughs> your boy Wade's not afraid to go in there. <laughs> I go in there and I'll just stare at the like they have those big screens and they have that whole thing going. Yeah, no, I'm not afraid to go in, Pam. <laughs> but, uh, all right, so and I used to be a big gamer. That's why I know. Um, right. Back in the day, it was fun. It was good times. When you had no – guys, do you remember back when you just, like, high school, you just, like – the life was life was yours. Like, you – unless you were, like, a really good student, which I wasn't, and I I, <laughs> um, I felt like, like, you could have took over the world and you had no bills. Like, I wish I yeah. could – if I could go back to that time, I would crush it. I would crush it if I can just transplant my brain I have now back when I was in high school. So I know it's it's crazy seeing some of these like young high school um, resellers hustling out there. Like there's a few I see on Instagram that I'm like I never would have even considered no. a business when I was in high school. No, and because here's the thing: like back when I was in junior high and high school, I mean I could be wrong, but it wasn't cool to own a business. It didn't seem like it. it right. Like, at that time is like be a doctor, lawyer. You know, there's like four things you can be basically in the whole world, right? And um, now I think it's cool to be like to own, be an entrepreneur when you're younger. Like it's different. Yeah. Now. I don't know. Maybe it's I'm wrong, Gary, guys. The Gary V world now. Oh, the Gary V dude. If I could, if imagine if you were if you were stuck in an elevator with Gary V, like <laughs> he would straighten your brain out like within five minutes, right? Oh, for sure. He can read people really well. Um, woo, did I just get a sell, guys? Oh, never mind. Um, <laughs> so all right, so let's get back into this. So. 
we now we're your full time. We know where you live. We know the the whole situation with the whole reselling. Tell me a little bit about like the day in the life of you. So let's say you go thrifting. Tell me how how do you like process your items? Like what what type of items are you selling mostly? Is it clothes or hard goods? And uh, tell us like how you take your pictures. Do you like give us the whole skinny on your your eBay outfits? All right. So um, I am very lucky. I have a condo. I do have a roommate, but he basically has his room, his own bathroom, and we share the living room. Everything else is mine. So my garage is all um, inventory for the clothing side of it because I don't have to have that temperature controlled. And I also have a couple of those long, like eight foot tables that I have stacked on top of each other. And that's my like processing station. So when I bring stuff in, I bring it into the garage and process it in, in there um, as far as sorting it to know what goes where, or if I'm getting electronics to know what needs tested and what doesn't. Um, and then my office is in the basement. So I've got my main room of my office is my desk that I'm sitting at. And then my full lighting setup um, for all my photos is over here. And then I've got a whole nother room that's not finished in my basement that is all hard goods storage um, and shoes. And I have some my hanging stuff in there, all my shipping supplies, like all the random stuff. But it's all – everything's just shelves everywhere in my condo. Um, so my lighting setup is pretty simple. I've got my entire wall is white paper. I just taped it to the wall. So I didn't have to paint and I can just move. I have mannequins that I set up against the wall. And then beside it, I have an, a white Ikea table, which I use for hard goods. So I can literally just move my lights left and right. And I have either clothing or hard goods set up. Um, I have probably about a thousand items currently for clothing. And I have probably three to 400 in hard goods. Um, so I'm definitely clothing heavy because it's easier to find, I think, for me. Um, but I love selling everything. Um, I sell, um, I'll show you later when we do a little bit of a haul, I'll sell anything from clothing, shoes, hats, to cameras, to I've got a longboard up here. Um, I sold a lacrosse stick, like anything I can find that I know is worth more than I'm paying for it. Um, and, I mean, yeah, that's, I think that's about. All right, now, after you're done selling per night, do you go in the tunnels and, and save save the state from any uh, – with the Ninja Turtles? <laughs> I eat a bunch of pizza maybe. I think that's the, I think that's the correlation to the yeah. turtles. <laughs> hey. Uh, so <laughs> I, got, I got the app on my phone for pizza delivery. Just come oh, bring it to my – Wait until the drones happen, man. That's oh. pretty interesting. Uh, can you imagine <laughs> getting your pizza on a drone? <laughs> I think I'd rather pay a delivery guy. Yeah. Like give him give him a couple bucks to guarantee it's getting here safe. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Most lucrative flip. Most lucrative. Um well, just this week I've sold I bought a graphing calculator. So it wasn't the TI eighty four. It was actually a better one than that. I think I found it at a garage sale for twenty five cents. I have no idea why they were selling it for twenty five cents. It completely worked. I did buy a cord to be able to sync it into um, the computer. So that cost me like two or three bucks, but I sold that for 80 bucks. I also this week sold a Jersey. It was a limited edition um, all-star game from the MLB 2003. And it was John Smoltz who is now retired and either in or on his way to the hall of fame. One or the other. Um, I found that just on the shelves at Goodwill for two or three bucks. And I sold it within a couple hours of listing it for a hundred bucks. Um, I don't sell a lot of like high dollar value items. Um, that's like my limit, 150 bucks. I've sold a couple cameras for 150 bucks, um, but I don't go much above that. I do have a couple of jackets listed for more than that right now, but that's usually my my best. That's my best uh, margins. Um, about a dollar into 80 or a couple bucks into a hundred. That's my best margins. I think that should get you out of your school. If you had a bunch of those, that would get out of your deck quick. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, Hickory and just subscribe to your YouTube channel. So thank you so much. Like guys, it, I'm telling you, this man is one that you're going to want to watch his videos. It's amazing. <laughs> I'll put his links constantly in there. So 
Uh, tell me real quick, and I'll, I'll, I you said mannequin. Did you name your mm -hmm. mannequins? Uh, no, I have not. <laughs> so I just picked up my dress form for female clothing at a garage sale like two weeks ago. I haven't actually even used it yet. Um, and my male one, it was like a store liquidation. They were closing down, and I bought it for fairly cheap. Um, but I've not named him. He's headless and armless, so I feel like it's weird to talk to something that doesn't have a head. Guys, um, <laughs> help him out a little bit. Like, come up the next five minutes with a name in chat that you guys can uh, name his mannequin for him. I, I have always been a fan. You ever watch uh, Two and a Half Men? Uh, when it was good, yes. So towards the end, Rose fakes getting married. And her husband's name is Manny Quinn, and then it comes to sh come to find out it's a mannequin with fake hair and fake clothes. So I have been a fan of Manny Quinn because I'm I, I'm fairly ironic like that. But I haven't actually named him that. Maybe that'll uh, if, yeah. we don't, if if nobody has a better suggestion, maybe we'll go with that. Yeah, guys, put your suggestions for mannequins in there. Welcome back, Mister Pac Man. I'm trying to throw him off his game because he has not missed a live show. <laughs> And um, so, as you notice, I'm putting, I'm staggering my live shows throughout. <laughs> In fact, I may just have one at like 4 a.m. at night or something and see if he attends. But um, all right, so if, if you really want to trick him, just throw up a live show without uh, without telling him when it's going. Oh, you just... got, yes. I well, I tried <laughs> that twice, but oh, okay. He must be creeping. He must be creeping. <laughs> he's um, got that. He's got that notification bell on. Yes. Oh, there we go. Guys, yes, 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 please, please, please. We have 50 of you guys watching. Hit the like button so more people can uh, find this amazing guy and subscribe to his channel after we're done, guys. I would love you forever. We have 18 likes. Let's get it to 30, and um, we'll come up with a good name for his mannequin. But all right, <laughs> so let's do – let's switch it up a little bit because I don't, I don't want anybody sleeping in chat. Let's do a little bit of your haul um, just to see kind of what you're picking up there in your state. Okay. Uh, so these were kind of funny. Number one, they're, they're not from a local person. That's for sure. But, uh, I don't think I've ever seen them before. I went to a garage sale and I found a pair of Reeboks Those and then cool. I started, I started looking at them and they're Miami dolphins. I think they're, they might be team related. I'm not completely sure. Um, they do have some dirt on them. They're not perfect, but they are in great condition for, uh, for what they are. I've cleaned them up a little bit. Uh, these actually, I think I picked them up for two or three bucks. These already sold today, so I got to ship them out tomorrow. But anything that you can find that's that's uh, logoed, that's not um, typical, let's say, like a jersey is typical, um, shorts are typical. You don't see the shoes very often, so I didn't even look them up for comps. I just knew that they were going to be forty or fifty bucks. Um, I, I love anything sports related. Um, so, how do you clean? Do you, do you have a, how do you clean the shoes? So that whole shelf right there is cleaning supplies. So it just kind of depends. Um, I know it's weird, but can you grab it all and then kind of explain like what you clean with it? Yeah. So see, I got a little bit of everything. So first thing I want a good stiff brush um, because anything um, that like the, the sides of it, I want to be able to get in there really stiff those, those like rubber foam parts, it just depends. You can use like a, a cleaner, like if you have like a brand cleaner or whatever. I like rubbing alcohol um, because it's very strong as long as you can keep it from getting on the leather or whatever the suede or whatever's up here. Um, that's a really good one. Um, I do for obviously for anything leather, I have the um, polishes. I've got like a little kit that's got polishes. It's got a couple smaller brushes in it depending on what areas you're getting. Um, I also have a thing called saddle soap. So this uh, saddle soap is for anything leather. So you can use it for shoes, baseball gloves, anything that's leather. Um, it cleans a little bit, but it also softens the leather back up and it kind of gives it a protective coating too. Um, and it's literally just like a little like, creamy soap that you lather on there and then you buff it out afterwards when you're done with it. Um, that's a good one for anything leather because you want to be very careful with leather. You don't want to scratch it with a brush or anything. So a lot of towels on that one. Um, I do tip a little trick. I don't see a lot of people doing um, toothbrush. So any of those like small crevices, 
like down in here, or even if you have like crevices up in here, that works really well to get in there and still has usually a stiffer brush on it. Um, and then there's a couple other, this is, <laughs> this is weird. I found this because I, like I said, 13 years in restaurants, this is actually degreaser for like an oven. Um, but it's super strong. So again, you don't want to get it onto like a very fragile surface, but like the rubber bottoms or the rubber around the, the, the edges, it's really good for that kind of stuff. As long as you're using like the toothbrush to keep it from getting everywhere else. Um, I see Paul says he uses OxyClean. I've seen that. I, I use that for clothes. I have not used that for shoes yet, but I have seen that that works really well for like, in, like the insoles or anything like that. Um, so it, it honestly just depends because every shoe is different, but, um, I've got sponges, brushes. This is like a polishing shoe, polishing brush. Um, so different texture materials so that for every material you have, you can clean it differently. Um, and then I also do try to shape the shoes a little bit. If they're starting to fall apart, just put those in there for a while and let them shape back up. Hey, I got a question about this, the, the shoe shaper. Um, yeah. I've seen a lot of cool, really good photos. I'll, let me get your opinion. I haven't done either way yet, but um, okay. I see a lot of cool photos of kind of higher end shoes, like dress shoes, with that in there of the photo. Uh huh. They're not selling it, but they have that in there. I just think, uh, of course, they take it out and they take photos of you know, but the main photo has that in there. I think it's right. a really cool, like a really cool look, you know. I uh, I do it for anything that loses its shape. I I put that in the photo. Yeah, that that's awesome because I think that looks really really good that way. Um, I don't, like like these shoes for example. They don't they're not there's nothing breaking down. They still have they still have their shape to them, so I don't put anything in those. But like like you said, dress shoes or like very soft leather shoes a lot of times stuff like that. I have I use that, and then I I also have a disclaimer in my description saying that it'll come from a pet friendly home and anything included to showcase the item. Is not included so like if i have a suit i put a tie on it or something that's not included shoe shapers stuff like that just so that i'm covered in case somebody complains i didn't get it so the pet friendly home <clears throat> i think that's really good unfortunately i couldn't put that because i've got four of them <laughs> <clears throat> three of them sorry lose track lose track guys lose track <laughs> as long as you don't lose track of your kids yeah yes <laughs> um after watching hugo uh or excuse me our interview yeah. He has got bunnies, and uh, so I, you know, I asked Astro, like, can we get a bunny? Can we get because they, their bunnies are potty trained? Like, who, uh -huh. who bunnies that are potty trained? I've never even heard of that before. Like, so that's I, incredible. I used to have a bunny that would do that. I would leave her cage open, and just the her door would be a, a bridge onto my bed, so she could run around the bed or whatever, and she would just go back in the cage to potty or whatever, and then I'd lock her in there at night. That's incredible. That's incredible. Pet friendly. So what, what happened to, um, tell me a little bit about your roommate real quick. Like, have you tried to teach yeah. him how to resell? No. Oh. So, he, so he is, um, I'm trying to think exactly where he's Mexican and I can't remember exactly where from, but Southern part of Mexico. Um, so he works in, in the restaurant. He works at two jobs, six days a week. So he has no interest at all. Um, in, Cause he doesn't have time. He yeah. literally, he gets home, he eats his dinner and goes to bed and then he wakes up and goes right back to his other job. So Jeez, he's a, he's a workaholic. He's got a good uh -huh. work ethic. It seems like, Oh yeah. um, do you wash clothing that has any type of odor? I'll get something to show you guys, but I'll let you answer that real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So washing clothing for me, I only wash clothing when I think it needs it. So if it does have an odor, I will try to wash it. If it's an odor that can be, I know there's a trick you can put it in the freezer and the freezer will kill some of the um, smell. So I will kill some of the smell in the odor, in the freezer first, but then I'll wash anything with an odor or a stain. But anything that doesn't look like it needs washing, I usually won't wash. Now, um, I use, it's tough because I do um, a lot of vintage clothing and um, you got to be really careful with that older stuff sometimes. But um, sometimes if it's too fragile, I'll just be like, look, you know, here's the issues. And you can even put that there's an odor in there that that way when they get it, they can then perform anything they want on the clothing without it being on you. But um, majority of my stuff you can use. Um, I, I use this stuff actually. It works pretty good. It's odorless. Like, you know, that there's no smell to it. And dude, it does. It, it is amazing. Like 
I'll, you know, I'll be there on there, spray like three or four, and then boom, it's good to go. So it just uh, it just eats the the odor, basically. Oh, it's incredible! Yeah, you can get it on Amazon, fragrance free, non perfume odor eliminator. It's for clothes, eliminates it automatic, like right away. I don't know what's in here. Like, I think uh, you know the great Lord Himself blessed this because it's a good product. Um, so, anyways, guys, it's on Amazon. It's on my link tree if you want it. But yeah, it's really good stuff. Um, all right, so. Do we have are, are we done with the haul real quick by the way before I move on? Uh, I mean I've got a few other things. Let's show um, it. Let's show it. So this I think you're a sports fan, so you might appreciate this. Um, I found this at a garage sale a couple weeks ago. So Chicago Bulls Championship. This is the nineteen ninety seven hat. Oh so this God. is this is halfway through their or this is yeah, halfway through their second three P. And it still has all the tags and it is a locker room edition. Um, I, I paid 10 bucks for it, which I still think is super cheap. Oh, um, yes. Oh, yes. But I've got it. I've got it on both platforms right now, but I'm not willing to go very low on it because Jordan was like my idol back in the 90s. So you, you, you got to you got to hold off on something like that because it does. It doesn't appreciate uh, depreciate in value. Um, right. And it, it might take a while, but you'll find the person that wants it for sure. Oh, yeah. How much do you have it up there for? I'm curious. Uh, I think I've got it for a hundred on both. Oh, dude, that 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 yeah. is actually. I've I've sold a, a, a few. Um, uh, oh, look. oh, that sounds like a sale. Yeah, 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 good timing, good timing here. Let me uh, <laughs> let me show you what I sold. Some raid apple fruit fly trap killer guys. So I, <laughs> okay, don't think I just sell clothes. I sell everything in here. Um, let's see. And it was uh, fifteen bucks. I'll show you guys. Nice. Yeah. So, oh crap, you can't see it. Anyways, at the top there. Oh, that was. Is that part. is that similar to the one you put on Instagram earlier? Same one. I just have so much. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. bought it for I can't remember thirty three cents each or something. Um, oh wow. So, yeah, salvos. So when you're out thrifting, do you have any tips or tricks for people? Like, do you have any techniques? Like, do you do the silent treatment? Do you just look at them with your big beautiful eyes and say, "Hey, <laughs> how does that work?" So you're you're. Oh wait, one second. Let's see, what? One, one second, one second. I clicked the wrong. Okay, there we go. Does that, okay. does that bring me back? <laughs> okay, go ahead. Uh, so did you say you mean like garage sales or? Yeah, just, just in general. Do you have any like techniques or anything? Like so, me? I would say tip number one is look for stuff you know, because um, if you find stuff you know, you don't have to do comps, you don't have to do anything like that. You can just pick it up. You know, it, you know what it's worth. Um, it's easier easier to haggle if you know what it's worth. Um, but I would also say be, don't be afraid to look stuff up if you have to. Um, if you're out like garage sales and stuff, I'd say two techniques i don't get to use them very often um but number one is bundle the more you buy from somebody the cheaper they'll give you stuff for um so if you're willing i've even seen people who will say hey i'll come back sunday night when you're done and i'll buy everything and give it give you 20 bucks for everything or whatever they just don't want to deal with it at that point um but like i got a bunch of um nfl hats they were all new with new with the sticker on them still and I said, how much if you just, I'll take all 20 of them. Like how much do you want for all 20 of them? And you can almost always get a better price doing that. Um, but I, I also say, don't be afraid to haggle, even if it's individual price. Like you got something listed for 10. You're like, is there any chance you'd take five? Like just be nice about it and be genuine about it. And don't lie to them. If they're trying to figure out why you're doing it, you're not lying to them. But um, I would definitely say the prices are not set. When Even in thrift stores, prices aren't always are always set. Um, if you are buying enough of it, they'll give you a better discount on stuff. What, one thing I like to do is bring my, um, um, business cards. I give them a business card. Yeah. So I'm upfront and honest. I'm like, dude, I'm going to resell this, you know, in a nice way. Right. 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 Um, and I give them my business card and say, Hey, in the future, if you ever do any garage sales, give me a call. And a good portion of the time they'll have you go out there early before the garage sells up because business cards, a lot of people keep business cards. Now the yeah. vast majority won't, but a good portion of them do, and they'll they'll call you if they have something. Or remember, these people are not resellers most of the time, right? That are doing garage right. sales. And yeah. so if they don't, I'm always like, hey, 
if you're not going to have a garage sale, but you have items to sell, here's my business card, right? Uh -huh. I don't know how people do that. Yeah. And I mean, have a list in your head of what you like to look for. Because a lot of times people will ask you that when you walk up, hey, do you look for anything specific? And if you have a list of stuff, you might trigger something in their head that says, oh, that's still in my basement. I'll go get that for you. Um, but if you just say, no, I just look at everything, then they, they're not going to think about the stuff they have in the house still. And if they have it in the house, nobody else has seen it yet. So, yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Like, I'm trying to think if I was not a reseller and I had a garage sale and a reseller came up and said, hey, I'm a reseller. You don't just come up and say you're a reseller, but if you right. have a conversation and there's opportunity there, like you can purchase the merchandise like day two of them, you know, closing up or if they're for in his case, the hats like. Who would have hats, brand new hats <laughs> like that, right? So right. I'm going to give them my, my card and be like, hey, if you ever have anything wonky, just give me a call. You know what I mean? So Yeah, for sure. All right, so what is this you have in your hands? You're not going to beat me with so, that. Anymore. I might if you want me to, but so oh, this, this, oh. <laughs> this is uh, one of those bolos that I probably wouldn't have thought of. I think I got this from College Picker. Um this is a squash racket. Um, you definitely do your research before you just go buying all squash rackets. Um, but this one, I forget what it said on it that set me off to buy it. Um, but it's like a very lightweight, almost like a carbon fiber material. Um, it looked fairly new. It didn't look like it ever been used or it's been really strong, one of the two. They had two of them at Goodwill. So I bought them both for five or six bucks each, I think. And they have the cover with them. I already sold one of them for 80 and I think I, that was taking a best offer. Um, so, like, if you find the right material, even tennis rackets, if you find, like, the carbon fiber ones, or I think they have titanium ones now, but, like, the newer technology rackets and stuff, those sell great um, because people don't want to pay. This is – I think I looked this up, and I think it was, like, a $195 to $200 racket brand new. So people don't want to pay that, but they want this same level of, of uh, quality. It seems um, is it pretty light? It is. It's very light. I think um, I I like Franken boxed it, and it still only weighed a couple pounds. Um, it's like nine ounces without any packaging, and all and because it's so durable, um, all I did was bubble wrapped it, the head of it, and then just folded a box around it basically and stuck the label on the box. So stuff like that. I mean, you don't need fancy packaging if there's no chance of it getting damaged. I I um I like the uh, Portland Pickers because they they do some crazy boxes. We have we have <laughs> like I'll do a crazy Frankenstein box, and those of you who don't know that, it's just like it could be anything. It could be just like multiple boxes put together and taped, like looks like a you know um, like an old tomb or something. Like crazy crazy boxes, right? And uh, and then they'll do one, and they always outdo <laughs> every single. One. He's a smart guy. So all right, so tell me tell me. Real quick, and I asked this question, how has reselling changed your life? Uh, I mean, it's crazy. I have a business degree, and so I graduated 10, 11 years ago with a business degree. And for all, that entire time, I've been looking for my, uh, something that I can grow myself and own myself and not have to work for somebody else. Now, granted, I still work part-time jobs, but I can set my own schedule. Um, all summer I played in, I think three different sports leagues just to kind of stay active. Um, and then when people text me all the time, like, Hey, can you help us out play this sport tonight or whatever? I mean, it's, it's amazing just being able to be like, yeah, I can come hang out tonight and work my butt off in the morning to get there. But like just being able to do stuff on your own or even little things like, uh, um, my dog here, like, I can't tell you how much, difference it makes in her mood for me to be around all day than for me to lock her in a bathroom for six hours and come back and be like all right now let's play for two minutes and then i gotta go to bed <laughs> so just it's, it's amazing the difference it has to have flexible schedule yeah uh, um redneck i can definitely do that let me uh let me tell you so uh, let me let me just grab a business card real quick um and then i'll answer your question and then we got two more questions uh, and then we have a couple more things here. Let me see. I'll grab one right over here, okay? So I'll let him answer that too, but I was actually playing around with it today. Um, there is a way that you can go onto their website. Um, there's a bunch of different websites. I think I was looking at Vistaprint, 
Um, and you can kind of play around with all their designs and look and see. They might have like a um, preset form that you like. But if they don't have a preset form, Wade's got the answer for that one. Yes. Yeah, they, they have a lot. In fact, the one I used is actually preset except the main photo. Um, so basically, this is my business card. Oh, one second, guys. Ah, screw it. I don't even care. This is my business card, guys. Um, so what it is basically is, um, you know, you don't have to have a main photo. Like I have the eBay t-shirt on, right? You don't have to have that on there. What you could do is you could just do a plain one with your name and all that. But if you do want one kind of custom, um, this one's cool. Cause it's got, it's got kind of like shiny to it. Um, and so if you do want a custom one, what you do is you call, first of all, don't order the cards right off the website. You don't do that. You, what you do is you call them. Because the customer service will give you a forty percent off your first order, or your second order, or your third order. Like they have a they have a code. You just ask them, say, "Hey, I buy a lot from you guys. Do you have a code I can use?" And they'll give you a code for the checkout. And so, anyways, though, to answer your question, so you can do this. Um, just call them up. You already know your personal information. What they'll do is they'll pull up this diagram, and then they'll move everything for you. And and then they'll save it. You'll tell them if you like it, and you can make changes with the customer service rep on the phone. And then it will change. It will add it to your profile because you create your own little account, um, which is free. You create the account, then you go and you'll pay for it, and then they'll ship it a couple of days later. So, thanks, Paul. Appreciate it, my man. Um, all right. So my next question is: Is do you have any? I asked this um, to you know just to see. Do you have any websites or apps that you use that help you with your day to day reselling life? Honestly, I would say. 90% of it is just eBay itself. Um, just looking up stuff on eBay um, or Instagram. I guess Instagram and, and YouTube would be apps that are daily helpful. Because um, I, I do watch a lot of haul videos, especially people who do mostly men's clothing, just because that's what I'm more confident with. Um, and Almost every time, if you watch the same person for enough enough videos in a row, you're going to start finding stuff that you just didn't know. Either stuff you didn't know existed or stuff you've seen and just passed up. Um, I know I was watching Rally Roots video today, and they had a, a brand on there that they didn't even know about until a couple months ago. So, I mean, it's it never hurts to just watch. I, I watch them in the backgrounds while I'm listing or whatever. Um, but other than that, I think those are my main ones. I do... Um, looking at my apps right now um i believe i have fun oh yeah that's something else we have in common i've had two phones for a while now because i number one you can write it off on your taxes but i can do everything business related on one phone and then wipe it out at the end of the day and just not have to worry about my personal stuff um i do use self books um the self-employed QuickBooks thing um, to keep track of my daily expenses and my mileage and stuff. Um, and then what was the other one that I use? That's not typical. That might be it. That's those are the main ones that I use um, on a regular basis. Oh, yard sale treasure map. That's a good one. A lot of people know about it, but there are definitely people who still don't know about it. Um, yard sale treasure map is an app. That it's free if you only want to look up Fridays, but if you want all day, seven days a week, um, it's two dollars a year, so it's basically free. Um, you, it'll show you. That's a map of my area. Every red dot is a garage sale on my area going on Saturday. So Saturday, and then you can color coordinate it. So the orange ones, any of the one that's orange on there, says the word community in the title somewhere so I can narrow it down to the ones that I want to look at, but it literally pulls from Craigslist or people who add to this app and you can map out your entire day of garage sailing and you're not wasting time. Um, looking them up in between each trip, you can go in the night before and map out your entire day. Um, so that is a, a great app to use. If you do a lot of garage sales, um, even for me, I only can garage sale four to five months a year and it still pays for itself from the first trip almost every time. So Todd said the com the complete. By the way, that garage sale uh, the garage sale app is amazing. Uh, yeah, uh, it's like it saves you so much time. And I think that as a reseller, as a full time reseller, like time is precious. Like mm -hmm. it's funny. 
you tell me if I'm wrong, but when you have a full-time job, I feel like you have, in some cases, obviously your roommate, your roommate is just crushing it with a couple jobs, but you almost have more time then than you do now. Cause now you're just like, you're constantly packed, constantly doing something. I mean, yes, you can create time as a full-time, right. reseller, but I mean, you leave a 40 hour job to work 80 sometimes. It's just, well, yeah, but yeah, the thing about a 40 hour job is you set up, you clock in at 8 AM, let's say, you know, I've got this amount to do until five o'clock and then at five o'clock I'm done. Like it doesn't matter if I'm done or not, I'm done. Whereas a reseller, you say, okay, I've got, this pile of clothes that I'm pick, taking pictures of today, well, five o'clock hits and you're not done with those pictures. You're going to keep working on it until it's done. You're not going to stop or you're going to immediately think of the next thing to do and start doing that when you think you have a couple minutes. So yeah, it's, you, you feel a lot busier because you can never turn your brain off when you're doing, doing it for yourself. Oh yeah. When you're doing it for somebody else, you can be like, that's ah, not my problem anymore. Oh yeah. No, I, I agree. And nobody like, nobody works harder for your business as you do. So mm -hmm. uh, that's probably why you work more hours too when you're full time. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So my, one of my last questions here is I always ask this question cause those in chat may not, um, Todd, did I ever bring that up by the way? That oh, you start, you started to, and then you uh, distracted. Okay. Um, let's see, let me pull up that. Where's that? Completely. Uh, oh yeah. I actually do have that downloaded. What type, what does that do for us? So com the completely app, it's not free. You have to pay for it. But what it does is it will pull, um, Todd, correct me if I'm wrong. Cause I've only used it a couple of times, but it will pull all sold listings for eBay for more than just the, whatever it is, 90 day period. Um, it'll do it forever, I think. But then you can also look up your stats on there. You can look up, so it'll tie into everything, um, rather than just looking up solds. Um, and I can't even remember where it's at on my phone because I, I stopped using it for a while. Um, but yeah, it, it it's the way to do your research without just going to eBay.com, and it and it pulls up more options or more um, of and what's only, going on. It's only three ninety nine. That's cheap. Oh, okay, yeah, that's cheap. That's 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 crazy. Oh um, yeah, and that's the other thing. It takes it shows the solds even if they took a best offer. It still shows the price. Guys, real quick, I haven't done this on a live show yet, but. Tell me if there's some cool apps out there for reselling purposes that you guys know of. Put it in the um, put it in the chat, and if you're watching this after the fact, put it in the comments. If you've got apps that you use to help you on your day to day reselling, I'm curious. I am really curious. Um, okay, um, Paul, really nice just to watch two resellers with such positive attitudes and amazing tips. We need more men like you. More men like you guys in this world. Uh, thank you for all you do and helping the reseller community. And I, I could I could tell you that it was it was mind blowing to me when I went to eBay Open. Like it's hard for me sometimes because I'm a visual person. So the funny thing is, is when I met this amazing man, I don't remember him, but I remember his his um, his uh, Instagram icon, right? Yeah. And I've been following you for a while, but I I remember the your icon, and then I met you, like. So I would, I would walk through the halls of eBay open, you know, up there and people would come up to me and, and I have had conversations with them. I remember the conversations, but I don't remember them because I'm visual. Now I right, remember. right, right, right. It's great. It was just such a, <laughs> such a good experience. Yeah. That, that was part of the, I mean, like I said, I'm a business major. So that was part of my, like, I would guess you would call it marketing is I wanted a logo that was memorable that sticks out. Like if you see it in the chat there, it's, it pops out right away because it's uncommon and the name too, like it's gotta be short and catchy and still help figure out what I am or what I do. Yep. So. And uh, I might have to make me a, 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 a vegan meal one of these nights and take a picture <laughs> and see what happens. Um, okay. Does Chrome extension count? Um, <laughs> uh, so I, she's amazing. She's always commenting on all my, uh, Oh, I found out she, one of my favorite foods is Thai. We had um, Hugo on and, I kept on saying Thai and really it was, uh, <laughs> what was it? Uh, Vietnamese, I believe. Yeah. Vietnamese. And um, yeah. And so it was, uh, it was funny, but yeah. So my next question here, and then we'll wrap things up. I was asking this before we got on a, a um, crazy train here, but um, <laughs> what, uh, what resellers do you watch both on Instagram and or YouTube that you enjoy? And the reason I asked this question is, is I want to, 
you know, those of you who are in chat, when I first started reselling, I'd find one person, they led me to another, they led me to another. Like, that's why I asked this question. So can you name off a handful of people that you enjoy following? Yeah, so Instagram, I'll follow pretty much anybody that has what I consider valuable information. I don't necessarily look at who it is. I, if somebody pops up on my feed, I look at their entirety of their account and see if it's useful, and then I'll start following them. Um, but as far as like YouTube videos, um, Rally Roots are always on the top of my list. They have they always have like such a positive attitude with their <clears throat> excuse me with their knowledge, and it's not the same video every day. Um, Obviously, I watch your stuff. Um, I don't know if that helps because everybody here watches your stuff. But <laughs> um, Hazel Hearts Vintage is a good one. She does a lot of uh, uh, vintage, and she is super knowledgeable on, on clothing like that. Um, Corey from Mighty Mushroom, he is a wealth of knowledge for anything one-off, anything one-off. He knows a little bit about everything or a lot of it about something. So, um He's good. Um, I'm trying to think of who else I watch on regular uh, Craigslist Hunter. I watch him on a regular basis. Um, he's he's kind of on his own. Like a lot of people, either love or hate eBay. He just kind of is out there. Like here's what I do. Here's how I do it. He doesn't really care as much about the following. He's just trying to document his journey. Um, but with his store, he always gives something like new and useful that I've never seen before. Um, those are the main ones that I watch on a regular basis, but, um, anytime I see somebody pop up, like commenting on stuff, I'll check out their videos too. I couldn't echo that more. Like if I'm not following you guys on Instagram and you're following me, let me know. Um, send me a DM and I'll follow you back every like four months, three months or four months. I'll do a post and be like, Hey, if I, if I'm, you're following me and I'm not following you, it's only right that I follow you. So send me a post and I can um, send follows your way guys. Cause I love to see what you guys, I'm a degenerate on Instagram. <laughs> like I'll sit there and creep on your guys's page. Um, so, all right. So that being said, um, I want to say it was an extreme, extreme pleasure having you on. I felt like everybody in chat, you guys felt like he gave a lot of knowledge, a lot of cool nuggets, a few things that I had no idea existed or even was there. Um, and I really appreciate the fact that you guys in chat also give tips because I had no idea about that other app as well, which is really cool. It's kind of like um, WorthPoint in a way, but it's an app. Yeah, cool. yeah. Um, so, guys, make sure you follow his um, YouTube. Uh, the link is in the description if you're watching this after the video. Um, here's the thing, guys. So this community is amazing, and we both, all of us, have a wealth of knowledge that maybe some people don't have. And I had to remember like back when I was like starting out, whether I, I was learning about a lot of stuff at the time and, and the people teaching it, you know, they got to realize that there's probably a lot of people in chat now that are just not seasoned. What I mean by seasons is they, they just started their reselling journey. And so sometimes like this information is redundant, but a lot of times you get nuggets that even I don't know. So I get more out of these interviews and I guess my point is, is I get more out of these interviews than, <laughs> Than I give. I just um, really, you guys, you guys are the amazing ones that can come on here and, and explain your your journey. So, um, and just like you said, Craigslist Hunter kind of explains how he does his process. Guys, yeah. get on social media. You know. Um, so my that brings me to my last last thing. Tell us what is in store for your YouTube channel. Uh, okay. So two things. One, I just want to throw this out there real quick. Go to my Instagram. Uh, I am doing a giveaway right now um for a lot of the ebay swag that we got at ebay open um i made that giveaway live right before the show so check that out um same name vegan flipper but uh so youtube wise my goal always is i don't care about the monetization like i know a lot of youtubers um do it for the money i don't care about the that i want to find um stuff that people don't think about on a regular basis so like last couple i did a couple hauls um that i got auctions um like a camera haul i've been doing a lot of cameras lately so i wanted to make sure and get some of that like general info out there on what to look for for cameras or how much they typically go for um i love i'm i love doing mystery stuff so i did a thing on my instagram where i bought this tube at the goodwill bins and i had no idea what was in it and it was sealed still 
and it said like signature confirmation and like all kinds of stuff that led me to believe it was never opened. So I opened that live on my Instagram the one day and it was some artwork from a gallery up in Michigan that I'm still trying to figure out how to get authenticated and priced. Um, but I do know one of my videos coming up soon on YouTube is going to be mystery box comparisons. Um, Cause I know that's like a big fad right now is buying these mystery boxes for people to uh, resell. Um, so I've got a couple of them already that I've looked at. Um, so I've got a, a very terrible one. I've got, uh, a middle of the road one and I'm looking to buy a couple more and just do them all in a live show. Um, so I want to get that set up in the next couple weeks. Um, but like I said, I'm always looking. So if you, if you know something that you don't know and you want to see some content on, hit me up, let me know, comment on one of my videos or, or Instagram or something. Cause I'm not, I'm always down to make a video if I have the information um, and if I don't, I'll tell you, <laughs> if I have no idea, I'll tell you, but yeah, that's, that's my big, uh, my big goal in the next couple weeks is to find something that is new content. Cause I don't want to keep repeating the same things that everybody else says. Guys. Um, I put this on Instagram, um, about, um, what, two or three days ago, I actually showed you exactly all the money I made on YouTube for one full year. Um, uh, I, I say one full year, but, um, I, it was actually a lifetime. But really, I haven't only been monetized. A monetization means that you're actually getting paid by YouTube uh, for two months. So, anyways, so I made about 350 bucks. Well, actually, 330 something, but we'll just say 350. The lifetime of my YouTube account. Now, the program that I use to edit my videos is called Final Cut Pro. That program alone is 400 dollars, and then you add add-ons. So I probably put about thousand dollars just in that program. My camera is seven hundred dollars. I probably put in to put in retrospect all the equipment that I use that you see, probably close to thirty five hundred dollars, and I made only three hundred dollars on YouTube, three hundred and thirty something. So my point to you is this: you can definitely make good money on YouTube. It takes time, but the way you got to go about it is to be one hundred percent authentic, and then the next part is going to be just document what you are doing because people love that. So yeah. Um, yeah, you can't go into it thinking you're going to make money because it takes like a year for a lot of people to even make. I mean, do I like I said, it's not even paid for my camera, right? And <laughs> so go into it with a mindset of just like documenting. And by the way, the people that go in with that mindset are the tip, the ones that blow up. Yeah, because they don't, they're not there for the money, but they're just like authentic and they just show themselves and they blow up. People love them. So yeah. All right. So that being said, guys, thank you so much for joining. We have um, another show tomorrow. I want to say thank you so much for joining too. It was a pleasure meeting you at eBay Open. Hopefully you sell that Ninja Turtle, but maybe you <laughs> um, And And uh, guys, like I said, um, go check out his YouTube channel. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell button because we've got some great stuff this year. If you guys notice too, if you guys like it where I show the live shows a week in advance on my YouTube page, Please let me know if you guys want me to continue to do that so you can continuously know when I'm going to do the live shows. And, guys, Reseller Mom, hopefully you're feeling better. Go check out her YouTube channel, guys. She's amazing. Met her as well, a baker. Um, so that being said, guys, thank you so much for coming. Hopefully you guys had a great time, and I will talk with you next time. Oh, I told you today was early. <laughs> I almost left out the most important part of the show, man. Um, so we always leave off with a words of inspiration from our guests. Go ahead, my man. I've been thinking about that. So I think my biggest words of inspiration in general, in life in general is, and you're a sports guy, Wade. So I think you'll get this the most, but uh, the, the best highest known baseball players in history were only successful 30% of the time. So there is zero chance you're going to make it through life or this business or anything else being right 100% of the time and being perfect. So anytime you aren't perfect, anytime you have a mistake, anytime something happens, figure out what the lesson from that is and figure out how to improve it next time. So you'll, you're never going to be 100% perfect. So I want to ask you, do you know the Jordan script? The I missed X amount of shots. I have, do you know that? Uh, I feel like I've seen it before. I don't know it off the top of my head. 
Well, I don't either because remember, I can't remember that stuff. But basically, <laughs> he said, um, and don't call me verbatim, guys. It was on a jacket. But basically, he said, I have taken X amount of game winning shots and missed. I have um, been trusted like X amount of times to take the last shot of the game and had lost the game. I failed over and over again in my career, but that's why I succeeded. So, something like that. Anyways, it's yeah. one of my favorite quotes of all time. So, all right, guys, we're going to leave you with that. I will see you tomorrow. You guys have an awesome day. Wait out and vegan out. See you guys. <laughs>